A day on Earth is a deceivingly simple concept. Today we'll examine that day on Earth in detail, perhaps uncovering a few surprises. A day is the length of time it takes the Earth to spin 360 degrees on its axis. Or is it 361? Here is a simple model showing the Earth, the Sun, and some background stars. The Earth travels around the Sun in an ellipse, with the Sun at one focus. The model, of course, is not to scale. Let's begin our examination at noon one day. The Sun is directly above the red line. That will be our reference point. Watching from a high vantage point, we see the Earth complete 360 degrees of rotation. But during that time, the Earth has also moved a bit in its orbit. So even after a 360 degree turn, the Sun is not directly above the same point on Earth that it was at the beginning of the spin. It is not noon of the next day. The red reference line needs to spin a little more than 360 degrees to get us to noon. The 360 degree rotation is called a sidereal day, while the noon to noon rotation is called a solar day. Earth orbits the Sun once for about every 366.26 sidereal days and once for every 365.26 solar days. Not only that, the length of a solar day varies throughout the year and for two different reasons. First, because of its orbit is an ellipse and not a circle, the Earth moves faster when it is near the Sun and slower when it is further from the Sun. So the little extra amount of rotation that the Earth needs to do to get from noon to noon changes throughout the year. Second, because the Earth is tilted on its axis, the little extra rotation to get from noon to noon is largest at the solstices and smallest at the equinoxes. So solar days grow progressively longer as we move from the equinox, March and September, to solstice, June and December. And did we mention the Earth's spin is slowing down? And the length of the solar day is increasing due to gravitational tides between the Earth and the Moon? The length of the mean solar day is increasing at a rate of approximately 1.4 milliseconds every century. Two billion years ago, there were about 750 days in a year. Now let's talk about daytime. That period out of 24 hours when it is light outside. Day versus night. Due to refraction and scattering of light by the atmosphere, there can be daylight even when the sun is slightly below the horizon. But day length is usually about the sun's disk being on or above the horizon. So the day begins the moment the sun's disk appears during sunrise and ends the moment the sun's disk disappears during sunset. At the equator, daytime and nighttime are equal to within a few minutes. But at distances north and south of the equator, the length of the day varies with the season, with the longest and shortest days being on the solstices. At the poles, once the sun has risen, it stays up for six months before it sets again. And during the course of each day, it travels in a complete circle around the edge of the sky. Because the Earth travels at different speeds in its orbit, the Sun is north of the equator for almost four days more than half the year. And the length of the average day in the northern hemisphere exceeds the length of the average day in the southern hemisphere 
by a few minutes. In the Northern Hemisphere, the Arctic Circle is the southernmost latitude where 24-hour daylight can occur at least one day in a year. In the Southern Hemisphere, the Antarctic Circle is the northernmost latitude where 24-hour daylight can occur at least one day in a year. And daylight savings time is like the old man who cut off one end of the blanket and sewed it on the other end to make it longer. <laughs>